the Wolverine you're now talking to. I know what you're thinking, punk. Question is, can I get Wolverine before he turns me into shish kebab with those claws? Well, bub, see it as how these claws are adamantium, the strongest metal known, and can slice through vanadium steel like a hot knife through butter, buddy. You gotta ask yourself, am I watching Toy Quest 101? You better be, because that's what you're doing. <laughs> And you heard it live and in person, the voice of Wolverine Caldod. I'm so excited because this is my childhood right here. Cal, thank you so much for joining us on Autism Awareness Month here on Toy Quest 101. Like I said, you're a childhood hero for me. I grew up listening to you uh, as the iconic voice of Wolverine. You have no idea how much you've impacted my life. I know you get that a lot, but I'm so excited for you to be here, man. Thanks for being here. It is my pleasure. Uh, I, I got to tell you that I, I would do anything for children that have autism, people that have autism. Uh, I run into them all the time um, on Comic-Cons. Like, it's, it's amazing how many people, children and stuff that come up to me and they all have autism. And, and I'll tell you a story uh, about the, my most memorable one was uh, this uh, father and daughter. And father was about... Um, I'm going to say 26, uh, seven, something like that. Right. And the, daugh the daughter was about eight. So I think that's about three. Seven, 27, the daughter was about eight. And, I, and they walked up together. And he was dressed in black and had these on. So, uh, and I, so I put mine on while he was talking to me because he just walked up and he was all dressed in a black outfit and stuff. And obviously it's Wolverine and, and his daughter was also in black. And he said, introduced himself, and he said, um, I have to tell you that you, and I couldn't stop him because I could tell he had memorized it. And he was just going through the whole thing. He said, and this is my daughter. Uh, I have autism and my daughter is autistic as well. And the two of them said, and he did this whole speech and I, I was almost crying by the end of it. And, and he just said, I, just, I had to come up and, and tell you that you, uh, you're the reason I'm alive today because I was so picked on and stuff. And I wanted to, was many times considered suicide and he said but i was afraid that i would miss wolverine on saturday mornings <laughs> and i could it would, that would always stop me and say he wouldn't he wouldn't let anybody bump him you know that that get to him he said so I, I i have to thank you and he was just and he had the claws on and so i put, put out my hand and there's a woman off to the right that i didn't realize it was his wife and, and the mother of the child and i put out my hand and he took off one of the claws and he put it out and he sh shook my hand and with that he just he just said thank you again for my child he did turned around and walked away with his daughter the woman then moved up to the table and she was bawling she just said i can't believe what i just saw my son has never ever my son my husband since i've known him has never ever touched another person's hand or anything wow. was part of his thing and so that i can't believe that he did that that made, i mean that's how much it meant to him yeah. Was to actually shake my hand. Yeah. Which, I mean, yeah. That, that's powerful right there. I mean, oh. the, the impact oh, no. that you've had on everybody, but people with autism too, that, that's huge. That's an that's a awesome oh, no, it, story. There were so many of them, Miguel. Like, uh, And they were all the, it's all this, not the same story, obviously, but it's just, uh, it's, I, I don't know. It was, it was odd. There were just so many people with kids with autism and stuff that would come to the Comic Cons and, loved Wolverine and loved what he stood for and the X-Men and you know it was, it was just a wonderful time and I missed that as, as we were talking earlier I miss uh, the actual comic cons so we can actually shake someone's hand and put your arm around them and have your picture taken with them those days those days are gone with this COVID stuff I mean it's yeah. just I don't know how it's ever going to be the same but, you know yeah hopefully slowly it'll get back to it um, oh, we'll I hope so you guys because I know I know the Comic Cons were new to you guys now, uh, especially with the X Men being on Disney Plus. So that kind of was nice for us fans from our generation 
to kind of see you guys out there in person. I know I haven't had the chance to, but one day hopefully that'll happen. Um, but yeah, that was, I completely get it. We used to go to Comic Cons all the time, so. Yeah. No, and I, I like, we, we, two years I've been doing it now. Well, up until this past year, nothing, obviously, but maybe a year and a half or so for two years that I've been doing it prior to that. But that, and that's all because it took, I don't know, I really wasn't aware of it. And someone said, I can't believe you're not doing Comic Cons. He said, You're huge. I said, Well, no, I'm not. I'm only five foot 11 and a half. <laughs> no, 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 you're like huge. It's like, What? You know, and so it took me a while. And the first one I ever did, I just, uh, it was from a Sunday afternoon from 11, yeah, 1030 in the morning until like 430 in the afternoon and on a Sunday. And I just went, it was just myself and a wrestler. And I, then, you know, a whole bunch of you know, comic books and stuff. But, it, but signing, there was, a, there were just the two of us. And it was, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. Because like you said, everyone they said, thank you for my childhood. And I said, what did I do? <laughs> Where? Was I there? <laughs> said, yeah, you kinda was, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, you were a pal. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. we'll we'll touch on the Comic Cons a little later because that's really important, oh, okay. especially now. Um, but before we get into the iconic voice of Wolverine, I want to talk about your amazing career prior to the X Men animated series. You had about twenty five years of singing and doing jingles on TV, and you even starred in your own show called The Circus in the late seventies. Talk to us about all that and reintroduce us to Cal Dodd prior to the X-Men animated series. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I, we were born in Ireland and came over here at a very a young age. Mom and myself and uh, my sister, older sister, my the younger brother. And then we had two more children when we moved to Canada. And we moved like right across, for basically across Lake Erie. Uh, you guys are in New Jersey? Yeah, we're in Jersey, yep. Yeah, Jersey, South Jersey. Yes. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, right across the the lake from where I grew up, okay. Lake Erie. Yeah. So it's the same time zone and everything. Uh, but it was a small uh, fishing town, um, three thousand two hundred people, and um, we came right from straight from Ireland there, and um, singing was everything. The whole my mother was was a, a music teacher vocal in schools and all the schools and stuff a vocal music teacher and could sing like an angel it was just she was had a wonderful voice of course she's my mom so i have to say that <laughs> no but she but she did i mean i've heard a lot of i, I mean i've been around i've been in the business for years i sang with ann murray and uh, you know the uh, chub chubby checker chuck berry uh bo diddley like the old guys from when way back when i met them i was just like yikes david and blood sweat and tears and um toured with joe cocker with the band that i got into but i i just started singing from very little and the family because because we were irish we were always sang irish little irish songs and stuff so we traveled around as a family singing mom would play the piano and the four of us would sing because my little my youngest brother sean was born blind and deaf so he was like a handful and it was just uh, he was our he was our little angel in our family because he was and it was just Never saw or heard anything ever in his life. And he was just an unbelievable kid. Anyway, um, so obviously he wasn't, couldn't sing because he couldn't hear. And um, so we did that and uh, all of us, everybody, my father sang and in the church, he was the, he led the congregation in the singing, mom played the organ and we would sing, <clears throat> excuse me, funerals and weddings. I would be singing at funerals and weddings from the age of <clears throat> Excuse me. Probably seven or eight years of age in Latin, and you know, to, at a funeral and stuff, uh, whatever. Yeah. And, and so, and learned how to sing every different style. And then I just, of course, the Beatles happened. Then that was there. There, there we go. There goes Cal. <laughs> uh, so, formed, gotten to formed our own little band in high school, and um, then got sidetracked. My father died, and I went into. Uh, the chartered accountancy after high school I thought it was going to be a chartered accountant that's because that's what he wanted me to do and right. when he died I said okay I am so out of here <laughs> out of this this accountant thing because no 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 I had singing but the singing was in my heart it's all I ever wanted to do went to Toronto with a guitar player to this agent she sent us right across the street to CBC radio she hired me immediately said she phoned across the street said wait to hear this kid 
<laughs> I was the kid over to and I sang and uh, got a they made me a little record I did a record with CBC that was the beginning then CBC TV wanted me to close off the 20th anniversary of the CBC which I did that's where I met all those uh, guys I was talking about no that was blood sweat and tears super special uh, so anyway uh, I became their future star of CBC TV so I then I started seeing commercials and jingles and met some wonderful all the people that are my heart were the best musicians in Canada and and the best singers by far and I was now one of them and <clears throat> singing about beer uh, Kellogg's cornflakes that I was the voice of they're great Tony <laughs> the Tiger yeah <laughs> uh, and though that kind of stuff but I never did that voice any voice work and I, until uh, the X-Men and uh, uh, yeah the X-Men and about a year prior to the X-Men yeah, a year and a half prior to the X-Men I did my first voiceover and it was for Chrysler Cars and I it was my I was the voice of Chrysler for a year and a half wow the only voice work I ever did the, otherwise it was all singing you know wonderful wonderful wonder bra like <laughs> wonder bra like no, no. Right, and they'd right. fly us They'd fly me into Montreal, you know, Quebec, whatever, to say that. And I would fly to Chicago to do Molson X, who I sang with, um, oh, God love me. He's a great, uh, oh, shoot. Um, here comes the sun, little darling. Here comes his, Richie Havens. Richie Havens. So right. Richie Havens did the solo for Molson X, which is a Canadian beer. And they flew th three of us over there to, just to sing, X says it, like behind him. <laughs> you know, to fly me this there, fly us. So anyway, it was a great life. That and then I got the the circus TV show. Came out of left field. Um, uh, so what? So um, ninety two. What, what? So ninety two. But prior to that, so um, for five years I had a TV show that was syndicated worldwide, and it was it's a great show. And uh, Le uh, Leslie Nielsen came and did the pilot with us. You know, Leslie Nielsen from Airplane and stuff, yeah, yeah. and don't and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> you know, know that movie. Anyway, he was he he was uh, he, they hired him to do like this be the ringmaster because there were circus acts like right. real circus acts Barnum and Bailey like the whole thing. Uh, and we did that. I did that, and a lot of singing, and we had dancers on there, so there was <laughs> dance numbers too. But you know, I sing. I was not about to dance, but but. Um, we had dancers and, and a girl, myself, so Cherise Lawrence and myself, we co-hosted this series for five years all over the world. It was syndicated and then that, that ended and I went back to working in the studios and jingle singing and then the X-Men came along in 92. We auditioned for it. <laughs> yeah, we auditioned for it. Yeah, so that that's the singing history and stuff there. Like, And my little brother, my little brother, I call him little, uh, well, because he's younger and he's littler, littler. <laughs> he uh, ended up going with the rock group Meatloaf. Meatloaf. We, 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 we did some, a theater show. We did a theater show in, called Hamlet. They wrote it for me. I was Hamlet. And it, we did it in Charlottetown, a huge summer festival uh, theater. And Rory and I, I, I got him his first job. He worked at the beer store in my hometown in the 3000. Come on, you're going to go sing this. So he never came home again. He went straight to New York. Because the show ended up going to Broadway, and I had, I just decided not to do it in Broadway. I took a, a job to replace Three Dog Night in the States, which is really what it was. It wasn't like, no, that wasn't advertised as such, but they were, uh, put a group together, and it was called Deja Vu, and we formed this, we did two albums. It was a great rock group, and um, I just got tired of that. And um, then uh, the X-Men thing happened. So uh, that yeah. would bring you, and then I went back and did more jingles and commercials and all that stuff. So speaking of that, you know, I want to go ahead and ask your question. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Ileana wants to ask me a question? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about how you got the call to voice Wolverine. How did that opportunity come about? There you go. So now okay. how did the opportunity of Wolverine come about? Yeah. Um, I had never uh, done, as I said, I had never done a voiceover, with, but for the one, and that's all. I didn't. I didn't even have an agent. Voiceovers, people always have an agent to keep them, you know, to let them know when there's an audition about to happen. And you know, all over the place, there's a lot of a lot of people doing voiceovers. 
uh, because uh, uh, jingle singers, singers never had an agent. So there was no one we had to pay for doing job because they just, everyone knew who was going to sing and, you know, but voiceover, there were a lot of voiceover people. And so <clears throat> um, I didn't have an agent when I got the Chrysler thing, which was great because I didn't have to pay 15% to someone. Anyway, um, so they, I, I got a call from this girl who know who knew me because when I got the Chrysler thing, I had done a commercial with the Chrysler people uh, that I was the sergeant leading his troops. And I, and I was, who's got all the four by fours? <laughs> Two, four, sound off. Who's got all the four by fours? Chrysler's got the four by fours. Sound off. You know, that kind of thing. She remembered me from hearing that on, you know, on uh, um, the radio. And she said, if they're having trouble casting for this animated thing. Are you into auditioning for it? I said, well, what is it? Sure, what is it? She said, um, it's, for, it's called Project X. Which is kind of cute because you know it's for the it was for the X Men, right? And it was specifically for the voice of Wolverine because they they hadn't found him yet. <laughs> so I went, who Wolverine and who are they? Who are they? She said, never mind, just go to it because she she knew I could I had a kind of a voice to do that kind of stuff. I said, okay, okay. So it's Wolverine. She said, I said, Wolverine, that's his name. She said, yeah, she said, okay, sure. So I went and they gave me a picture. Um, I don't have that one. They gave me a picture, not unlike this one. <laughs> All right, okay. Which is, which, which is the cell. This is a picture of the cell that they gave me. Uh, for it, Every one of us got a picture, a cell, um, the actual cell to, to hang on our walls, which is on my wall, of their own character. So of course I got Wolverine. Well, well why would I want Jubilee? So, <laughs> so uh, they showed me a picture of him and said, I said, oh, okay. Or, or one like this even. Nice. Yeah, and I love that picture. I said, and I said, so what is he? And they're describing it to me as I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the audition. And they're all from LA and New York. <coughs> and I'm in the studio and they hand me the line. And I said, so, and who do you hear him? They, they gave, rounded, rammed off about um, two, three names, Steve McQueen, um, of course, it's Clint Eastwood. Uh, Ward Bond, I found very odd. <clears throat> um, and then I added a lot of, of, of what became his voice for me was Wolfman Jack. Have you heard of Wolfman Jack? I know Ileana hasn't. I, earlier I did, yeah. He had a he had a voice kind of like Wolverine. Yeah, well, he was, and he was um, very well a rock and roll dude. But yeah. um, um, he did a midnight special. He hosted it and stuff, <coughs> rock shows that were on like at eleven thirty till years ago. And his voice is like the midnight special, baby, that kind of thing. It was that gravelly stuff, and I incorporated a lot of that in Wolverine. So I looked at the picture. <laughs> the first line I read. I said, because I told you it was from a small town. It was, it's a, it, and it's, you know, it was a tough town, the fishermen, the, the largest freshwater fishing, that, the largest inland lake fishing fleet in the world, that town Port over across yeah. from, you know, Erie. Anyway, so I'd heard the lines that they showed me of his, like many times, like anytime pretty boy, or like, uh, yeah, you want to dance? I mean, I heard them all, heard all those things. <coughs> <laughs> this dance round boy <laughs> I looked at the line and I, so I said okay and there's only one line that they gave me and I said this is it said, yeah okay so the guy went in I said okay go and I went um oh alright you egg sucking piece of gutter trash you always did like pushing around people smaller than you well I'm smaller push me and they all, they all, they all went like this. Okay. Oh yeah, it's there. All right. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can go now. I said, no, no, I don't. Not going now. I got a reason. So they gave me more lines, and they gave me that one. I know what you're thinking, punk. Question oh, is, yes. yeah, I know what you're thinking, punk. Go ahead. <laughs> no. So they, I heard the next day they phoned me. I said, would you like to do? It? I said, are you kidding? I can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> no. Listen, but yeah. I still didn't. I still didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> 
Yeah, but that, listen, that speaks to how talented you are. For you, and this, we're talking back in the day, for all you viewers, there's really no internet, there isn't anything like that. You're, you're there looking at a picture and figuring out this voice from a picture and the little that they told you, and it just came to you like that. I mean, that just yeah. speaks to how talented you are, man. Well, and I believe, uh, Miguel, I believe that thing, things are meant to happen. Yeah. Uh, because, it, it, and it's the way it happened, and at that all, the entire cast is Canadian too, it's very odd. <laughs> no, very odd. Only in this, uh, only in the sense that it, well, it, it's kind of odd because it's you know a U.S. big project, right? But the dollar, our dollar was so low then that they, they could they were saving so much money on studio time and everything <clears throat> by coming to Canada. That's the main reason they came here. But as Eric said, he said everything just sort of fell into place. It's just like, and like, why, why would I get the call for that? And like instantly know this guy i know the way he was going to talk and not going to take any crap from anybody <laughs> that kind of thing because because the, the way i was brought up and stuff but it was like i love this guy you know and now he's gone i has gone but you know i mean it's been many years since we've done it and they still like miss it's like a brother that's gone right. for me right. <coughs> excuse me so that's how iliana so that's how that's how it went at the audition and so I heard, found out the next day they phoned me and said, would you like to? I said, I'm far too busy. I can't do that. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. glad you didn't because like I said, I mean, even when I read comic books, um, I would I, like, I used to read the comic books, then the cartoon came out and now I have a voice to Wolverine. And every time I look at the comic books now or anytime I see Wolverine, I hear you. I don't hear anybody yeah. else. I hear you. And I know a lot of people say that, but you truly brought this character to life. Which brings me to my next question. So in Halloween night in 92, you get to see the animated series and Wolverine in live action with your voice. How did that make you feel? I, I couldn't believe it. I could hardly wait to see it because I was going blind. Like I was, I was doing his voice. We had, we had done like maybe six to seven episodes, whatever before I actually saw my, what my character looked like, that he was gonna look like this. Yeah. Because they just had the comic books pictures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, when I saw him and, I, and, I, my vo and when I heard him, saw him for the first time when he came on, <laughs> and, um, and I heard, heard the voice, it was just like, holy crap. It's perfect. My God, oh no, I love this guy. Oh, this is gonna be fun. No, and then I, then I really started adding more stuff, you know, an attitude to him. Right, right. <laughs> but he had wow. the writing was the writing was so good, Miguel, because he had when had one of the I think it was his second episode, the first or second episode could have even been the first. Uh, I think it was the second though when Jubilee arrives at the at the complex at the, you know at the home where they're all living at the, the castle, <laughs> the mansion, and. Um, they're all looking for her because they, they can't find her. So, and they're all out looking, the gambit and uh, four eyes, <laughs> Cyclops, Cyclops. Te te teacher's pet. <laughs> <coughs> are, are all, you know, being in charge all the time. I know where we're going. We're going out there, Wolverine. <laughs> so, yeah, right up. You, you do, I go where I want to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he jumps off, he gets out. And in the scene, because I wasn't expecting it, and I forgot the line because when I did it, I couldn't stop laughing after I did the, the line because that's like something, it's like exactly like something I would say too. Yeah. And it was so odd because growing up, I was terrified of dogs. I had a paper route and it was this one German shepherd that would always run out. <laughs> every, like after two years, of, you know, two years every day going by you. And if I could speak dog, it would have been two years I go buy you every day, and every day you have to run out and pretend you're gonna attack and nip my feet or something. <laughs> two years of this, it's me. You don't recognize me <laughs> after two years. So the, the line was, he comes, he they're all looking around and, and Wolverine jumps out of a tree and lands on the ground. And they said, so did you find her? <laughs> Wolverine, uh, Cyclops, did you, did you find her? And he says, no, the scent went cold outside the mansion. <laughs> got bit by a dog too yes <laughs> oh that was great what what like everybody needs to know that 
<laughs> but he's just, it was like an aside, got bit by a dog too, in case you're at all interested. <laughs> I just love that line. I, and so like he was, he had, he was very funny. Like, you know, they, he got great lines and he had, he had these aside lines that were hilarious. Uh, you know, like I said, when he, <laughs> when Cyclops, you know, they got along tremendously. He's <laughs> in the Blackbird, and he's having problems with the controls or something. And it's like, Wolverine says, what's the matter? Teacher's pet got cold feet. <laughs> and he's like, Cyclops turned around to give him a dirty look. And he said, he just turned, that's what this picture is. Turned around and said, anytime, pretty boy. Yep. <laughs> Listen, one of my favorite parts was when, um, and I'm going to try to do my, my Cal Dodd voice here. When he goes, <laughs> and he looks at Gene, he goes, Tell Cyclops I made him a convertible, and he just yeah, slices the. Oh I, man, now I started freaking out when he when he punched him in the in the stomach too. I know that was a big part because uh, that next, was not allowed, right? That was the only time that that was allowed on the uh, series, so that was a pretty cool uh, scene for me. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, that, that you mean he walks up behind him and just punches him in the gut. Yeah. <laughs> next time I'll use these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell Cyclops. Great. Oh, oh, man. Eliana, why don't you ask your question? <coughs> Did you ever think that the X-Men series or Wolverine would be so popular? Um, no, none of us. No. Well, after, like I said, after I saw the first um, episode on Halloween night, 1992, I said, wow, this, this could be huge. We didn't expect from year to year, didn't know whether we were going to be renewed. Because, right. you know, they can they come and go, cartoons and stuff you have. And for some reason, the, the law is uh, that five years and then that's it. That's, the, that's as long as I'll ever let a cartoon run, or a cartoon, animated series, animated series run. Right. Yeah, uh, run is five years for some strange reason. But uh, so after five years, it was done. But we never, ever expected it to be as huge as, as it became no not at all and we were in, in com, uh, competition with batman we started the same year yep, the animated series yep yeah and i just talked to um uh three days ago a sunday i talked to uh paul williams who i was so impressed because i was i told you how much i was into music <clears throat> and to meet that gentleman he the songs he's written Paul yeah. Williams, the little, the little short cape. He played Penguin on Batman. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that either. So, like, I wore the you know, to, to, for that. And believe me, when they say two minutes on those things, I couldn't stop talking. I mean, before I knew it, it just, he just disappeared. They just <laughs> stopped it at two minutes. You know, one of those things you phone in, but they, they, because I was Wolverine, they said, we're going to start with you for to start him because he hasn't done this. Right. And so I, I just talked about music and, you know, albums and stuff. And it was strange. Because that when I did the first that C CBC series that I uh, closed the, <coughs> uh, their twentieth anniversary, I, I was the very first first the last person anyone saw, and I was singing a song called "Isn't That What Friends Are For," and it was written by Paul Williams for B J Thomas, the guy who sang "Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head," just like the, that guy. Well, he recorded this song, but it was never released as a single, so no one knew it. So I talked to Paul about that, like you know. He was so. I'm Wolverine, and you are P the Penguin, <laughs> and you wrote a song that I sang on. <laughs> Excuse me. Wow, that's so, a, that's crazy. Small world, yeah. yeah small world, right? So um, Ileana, so that's it, no, we never had a clue. No, mm -hmm. nobody knew, and you know, and it was a, even to this day, like the Cyclops, God rest them, God bless them. Um, uh, Norm never ever realized it. Because he never he never got to go with us on any of that uh, Comic Con. <coughs> anyway, <clears throat> so he said it was just another gig. What do you you know? He had stuff he was giving away, his, his pictures of his character and stuff. Because he said, I don't want to. The kid seemed to really want it. <laughs> He's yeah. such a great guy. But yeah. anyway, it was a yeah. surprise to all of us, and still is to this day. I know, I know, and he was he was talented. He was very talented as well. A, a lot like your, the the whole rest of the cast, Beast, right, Rogue, yeah, all, all of them. They're just amazing. And, and you know, 
like I said, we haven't seen you guys per se at the cons, right? Uh, especially here in Jersey yet, but we have seen the ones online and stuff. And when you guys are off on the panel and all you guys are together, man, that's yeah. that's awesome. That, that's so cool. And yeah. Like I said earlier too, uh, you know, we got to uh, talk to Eric and Julia Lee they were on a previous episode. They talked to us about all the stuff that happened back scenes and how the animated series kind of came, came about. So it was really oh, yeah. a pleasure to kind of see all that, especially in a time where like, imagine it now, and now there's more technology. I'm assuming it'll be a lot more easier, right? To do stuff like that. Um, but you guys are great, man. I, and like I said, I hope to see you guys more in panels and once the world gets back to, to normal, yeah. hopefully, right? Um, yeah. Now, the X-Men animated series dealt with a lot of many real life issues that kids or anyone could relate to. Was there a particular moment or episode with Wolverine that was special to you or you had a favorite one? I, <clears throat> excuse me. I liked, um, I don't know why I have a hard time recalling the character, oh, Night. Uh, Nightcrawler. Thank you, thank you. Okay. I, I go through it every time I try and remember the name. <laughs> But it's it's probably my favorite, one of two top of my favorite. Probably one of my favorite uh, episodes <clears throat> because it showed, um, well, it showed the soft, if it can be called soft, soft Wolverine's soft inner side, right? Uh, you know, because he was never at peace within himself, and like this argument that he had with uh, Nightcrawler. The, the, Where's your God now? That that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I, when I was younger, I went to a junior junior seminary. Thought I was going to be a priest. Really? For three okay. for three for three years, I went to a junior seminary. <clears throat> so here's my character saying to him, "Where's your God now?" And I'm going like, "Whoa!" And he said, uh, "You know, of course, he was so gentle and." Uh, um, Logan, you, you, you think with different minds. This is only bricks and mortar. It's, that's, that's, you know, they're going to catalog look at what has happened to this, you know, and everything. It's only bricks and mortar. It's not like the human soul. It can be rebuilt. And people, you know, it's the, yeah, right. And he just march off. And it finally gets to him and hands him that a piece of uh, the Bible I and marks some, marks yeah. some readings for him to read. Just, 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 just put, take this back and, and read some of this, you know. And um, and he does, and he ends up at the, at the last scene of the thing is in Wolverine in the church, at the altar, kneeling down and reciting the stuff that Nightcrawler picked out from. And at the back of the church is Rogue, yeah. <coughs> and and right. Wolverine's like speak speaking the lines and stuff. And I would, which, which was had to come up with another voice. Like he didn't really talk, because uh, and that was a problem when we were. Uh, going through the whole figuring out how he was going to be when he talked just normally when he wasn't angry Wolverine right and that was I, I, I sort of fell into it I said because normally he would well, he would just talk like this so he's when he was doing the reading it was like and I would be like my heart whatever sorry <coughs> um, uh, and then he you turn around the, the camera goes back and it shows rogue with a tear running down her face. You know, so it was just a great, great episode and, and just yeah, powerful moment, right? Powerful yeah. moment, seeing another side of Wolverine that we haven't seen uh, yeah. in previous episodes, right? Yeah, and, and also when he went up north, whenever he got away and he, she, she said, uh, and he brought, he was going to leave the X-Men and he brought his, um, you know, that, that thing, his cell, that stuff with him in like a briefcase and stuff. And he was up with the Eskimos, at, at the Inuit, whatever. Yeah. And there he's, you know, he's, he's doing all kinds of fishing and, you know, embarrassing the guy who thought he was this. And that's, you know, here comes Wingnut again, um, um, Sabretooth, you know, to burn down in the mission, burn down <coughs> everything. Um, that, 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 again, so he's at the end of that, he's with the chief sitting, you know, they're throwing him up in a blanket and Wolverine has never, he said, he's got to like laugh or I oh said, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he doesn't laugh. <laughs> like he, he had never laughed ever in any episode, or even smiled or smirked. I mean, except if it came to Jubilee, and then he would just, you know, he was, had a soft spot for her. And they're throwing him up in a blanket. They said, "We have to do something." <laughs> so I just really, whoa, whoa! And then I did like a, a laugh at the, the buddy that I from my hometown. It was like, ha ha, 
<laughs> so that kind of a laugh I gave. Right. It's the only time he had to laugh. So they're sitting. He's sitting outside, and he's got this briefcase behind, beside him, and he's talking to the chief, who again is like, is like, um, what's his name, Nightcrawler, being very um, talking to him about his emotions and like you, you are, you, you are this. You did this for us. You helped us so much. And uh, you, you are my friend. And he looks down. Oh yeah. So. Um, yeah, he looks down at the stuff, at the, his, his headgear, <coughs> realizing that he he actually wanted to go back to the X-Men where his friends were because they might need him. And he said, and he said, and good, good, uh, good luck, my friend, because he knew he'd talk. The, the, the chief walked away and it just ends on Wolverine. And all he said was, all he said is, you called me friend. Yeah. That's all he said. Yeah, I think and that's he, all he had. Uh, he he went to find himself out there, right? Yeah, so I think that yeah. was uh, that was another powerful episode. One of my favorite episodes, right? Because it had the him and Sabretooth in it as well. So definitely a, a good one. Um, now we we touched based on Comic Con, so let's talk a little bit about that now. Um, now the X Men animated series, right? Is now they went through DVD, they went through Blu Ray, now they're on Disney Plus. So now you're getting other generations. So like Iana. And me, I grew up with it. Now she's being introduced to it. Um, and now you guys are trying something new, attending Comic-Cons before the pandemic, obviously. Um, yeah. But talk to us about attending Comic-Cons and meeting your fans. And, you know, I know you touched on a, a couple stories in the beginning, yeah. um, but how did, how different was that for you? And do you enjoy it? And do you, uh, you know, the panels and stuff, like talk to us about that. Yeah, I I uh, got to really enjoy the panels. That was when we could all get together at the end of the table, and I I just loved <laughs> on the panels much to be much like I call him Wingnut every now and then Wolverine, much like Wingnut, who's always the shit disturber, always. And so I liked, and they always put, they always announce me either first or last, you know, in the when they're announcing one by one, we go up to the tables, at the, you know, at a, at a the, the room where they're hosting the panel. Right. And <coughs> we, thankfully, most of the time, we all have our own microphone. Because for a while, it was like we were passing one around. I hated that. Because I love when someone else is telling their own story. I love interrupting them. Like, and going into character. Like, if Gambit was talking about his character and how he, how he got it. Because <coughs> one of the funniest stories, we did this on a panel. Um, Norm wasn't there. Too, which is too bad because it's it's a, sort of his story. But Gambit told it, and I keep saying to Gambit, "No, tell 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 the Norm story because I was there. It's when we were all working, when we were doing the series, the very first time we met each other right. in the studio. I didn't know these guys because they were all voiceover people. I'm a singer, so you know, I didn't know them, and they all knew each other. So I was like the outcast, just like Wolverine is and was. Uh, so." Um, Norm's standing beside me, Cyclops, and then uh, Beast, and then um, Gambit. Yeah, so Gambit's first, it's his first time he's doing his role. His voice, <laughs> you know, was it wrong, yeah? yeah? You know, the Gambit. Gambit, you know, he always talked in the third person himself, you know. Right. Gambit, Gambit not feeling too well, Shia. Yeah? It's like, <laughs> excuse me. So he's doing his voice for the first time, and Norm is standing beside me. And I've just, I've just, I just met Norm <laughs> and he turns, and Norm had the, the Captain America voice. He yeah. was like, you know, I know what we're going to do now. We're all going to go in there and we're going to do exactly what the professor tells us to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, shut up. <laughs> so, no, so here's poor Gavin. He does his first line, whatever he's doing. And Norm turns to him and says, and very seriously, he didn't crack a smile or anything. He just turned to him and said, is that the way you're going to do it? <laughs> and he was so proud of himself, Gambit. Like, you know, the first line. And Norm said, is that the way you're going to do it? It's just, it just broke everybody up. And he said, no, no, I'm just kidding. But you couldn't tell. Right, right. Because it sounded serious. That's what, so all of us were in a group like that until it got technically, we couldn't do it because mics were leaking. We were leaking into other characters' mics, you know. Yeah. talking and recording. The engineer was a nightmare for him. So we ended up eventually, all of us going in one by one and 
but I so miss those days when it was all of us there. You, you know, Sabretooth yeah. and I doing a doing a fight scene that would be just stupid. Well, we had to do all those together whenever there was a fight scene between the two of us because it didn't matter if we leaked into each other's microphone because it was all. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's amazing, man. Yeah. So what was, I forget your initial question. No, just how, you know, how the Comic-Cons were. You touched on the panels. And oh, the stuff and yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, Norm, uh, so, uh, yeah. So, we were on a panel, and I always tell Gam, Gam, tell the, tell, you know, the Cyclops story, you know, when you first did, which he does, and people just love it. But, so, I, and it's George is speaking about Son of the Beast, because George and I do it all the time. It's just, <clears throat> Beast and I go to all of them. And I got him involved after I did about two or three. I said, George, you got this is stupid. Come on. And it's a riot because, you know, they fly you in. They put you in a great hotel. They feed you. They give you a per diem. And you take your money when you leave. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> and it's weird. It's lovely because, they, you know, they, like Donna goes with me. It's just like, it's just like flying all over the world. And we yeah, did. We went to wow. Wales. We went to Wales, for God's sakes. Wales? <laughs> anyway, so we got now we got Gambit coming in and um, Rogue. Uh, <coughs> I'm so sorry about this. That's <coughs> okay. Um, how many of us? So there's myself, Gambit, uh, Rogue, Beast, Rogue. Mm -hmm. and I think that's it, usually that's just the four of us. I thought Mr. Sinister probably. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Mr. Sinister, yeah. Uh, Chris. So anyway, um, when we get the panels, if they're having a series, you know, they're doing so. I'll just interrupt them, like you know, if it's depending if it's Gambit, like I would just, why don't you shut up, Cajun? <laughs> <laughs> and he's in the middle of telling like a real serious story. They look over at me like, and I, I just love doing that. It's just, <laughs> so just, and there's always someone running it, like yourself, ask, asking the questions and stuff, and it just right. it throws them off too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. It's a way to make it but, fun, man. It's a way to yeah. make it fun. Well, exactly. So I look forward to that. And um so starting at starting off, I didn't know what I was doing either. I and mean, it was just well, this is just great. Yeah. What is the only hassle if it is the airports. Oh yeah. And you have to deal with that and it just got crazy, crazy stuff at the airports, like missing flights and you know, yeah. I'm saying, you know. But that it's part of the gig. Yeah, it's part of the gig. Uh, but it's yeah. really good to, you know, touch base with your fans. Like I said, you know, back in the day when you guys were doing the animated series, there was really no way to communicate with your fans. And now you're no. kind of doing it now. But the X-Men animated series is, is cemented in pop culture. Not only was it popular yeah. before, but now I feel like it's more popular than it's ever been. Especially oh, it is. the younger fans and stuff. So uh, I'm glad yeah. that I'm seeing you guys more on, on Comic Cons now, the virtual cons as well. Um, and like I said, hopefully one day we get to meet you uh, and the rest of the cast in person. Uh, that would be a great yeah. um, opportunity for us. Um, but you voice another iconic character. So Liana, why don't you ask your question? One of my favorite series is Goosebumps and you played the voice of Slappy. Talk to us about your work with voicing him and how do, you, do your fans respond? <laughs> They, that is that's a great question because I all I all I did when I was started the comic cons I, I was cover Wolverine and I, I never put up anything and then I noticed some of the other people at the comic cons had other characters that they had voiced and Donna said well this is stupid you should put up let's, and I didn't even mention it some little girl like Ileana's age came up to the table and said this might have even been in Wales and said um do you, did, didn't you do the voice of Slappy in, in Goosebumps? She said, yes, I did. <laughs> do you have any pictures of Slappy? And I just went, no, I don't. Yeah. And that was an eye opener for me. And I said, I'm sorry. Right. And I said, but, and I had my phone, which I could play, I could pull up songs. I have a speaker, like the one I use when I do the thing on Facebook. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> the theme, the theme song from Goosebumps, um, I did the theme song as well. Like uh, Jack wrote the music and stuff, and I did the. If you would beware, you're in for a scare. Do we wait? And like blink, 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 
did it in it. That's a great thing. The opening thing. Click, 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 click. You would beware. You're in for a scare. <laughs> But then this this bird brain here, this guy. Hey, there he is. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> And his voice is way up here. And that's amazing. now you now you'll be my slave. You'll always be my slave. Yeah. yeah. So you voiced all you know. You voiced iconic Wolverine. You voiced Slappy. Um, How do you feel when you see like all these comic books and and you see the statues and stuff of Wolverine and the X Men animated series and when you see all that at the stores, I mean, you, I, I can imagine you're proud, right? That's that's you. And it's oh like yeah, I remember doing some of the uh, uh, some of the toys. I did stuff uh, commercials for Toy Biz, right? Of course, as Wolverine, but um, some of the a doll that was about this high. I wouldn't call it a doll. Maybe it was a robot. But yeah, I was a doll about about this high, and you pushed the button in the middle of his stomach. And he, he would just go, "Back off, bub!" And it, and it was my voice. And yeah, I, you yeah. know, I'd, the kids would go into the store. The kids and they push that button, and, and they say something, and it would be it would be their uncle Cal. They'd, they'd <laughs> tell him, wow, that's unbelievable, and that's such a weird feeling. I say, what? I'm inside hey, a toy. In video, you're in video games now too. Your voice oh, yeah. in video games. Yeah. Well, yeah, I did some of that. I did a couple. Those those were interesting. Uh, two or three. I can't remember how many I did. I walked out on one. Um, I couldn't believe the number of pages. And I just did. And they were from China, China or <coughs> excuse me. I think they were from China. Anyway, I, I, it just didn't work out that I was going to do whatever that whichever one that was. Um, but. Uh, They're they're uh, different, the, yeah. the video game things, yeah. And I thought about getting into that now, because uh, it's it's big, it's huge. Yeah, <laughs> the, the video games are like huge. And I did uh, a comic Capcom, uh, yeah, the, one of the first ones. Yeah, Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah, I have it. It's one of my favorite games. And guess oh, what? Yeah? I pick I pick Wolverine all the time. <laughs> 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 Never fails. Um, now. The question you probably get a lot, and what fans want to see: Marvel and Disney now are together. If Disney and Marvel will get their stuff together and want to produce another season of the X Men animated series, would you voice Wolverine again? <laughs> in a heartbeat, pal. Hey, that's what I'm talking in a, about. In a heartbeat. All of us, George. I mean, Booza, like all of them, said the very same thing. Said, no, they're all on board, I don't, and I don't understand. Uh, you know, I don't. I just don't understand what's taking them. Because they're, they're, they were talking. This is goes back two years ago when it started, uh, and it was going to be like to do a sixth season, so that they could wrap it all up and stuff. As Eric, Eric said, Eric and Julia, yeah, <laughs> to wrap up the whole series and you know, end it properly. They don't. It's only like what twenty episodes. I don't know how many episodes, however many they need to do twelve, sixteen, eight, whatever. But oh yeah, we would just that would be such a gas to do my brother again, <laughs> you know, because I miss him. It's ridiculous. Right, right. So do me a favor. I want you to look at the camera, and I want. Where's to... where is the camera? Because I find when I'm. No, you're you're good. You're looking at it, but I want you to look at it <laughs> and tell everybody. Tell, let's let's talk to Marvel and Disney directly and tell them, let's do this next season of the X Men animated series. And you can do it in your Wolverine voice if you want. There you go. <laughs> um, is Marvel involved again? Like, is, is are they? Uh... I'm pretty sure they have to be. Yeah, it's because Disney uh, bought Marvel now, so. Yeah, I know they're together, so, but I'm I'm sure Disney has the uh, the say in everything. Oh yes, they do. Oh, but yeah, so but, just let it go on I, camera right now. Let them know why it's important for us to get another season of the X Men animated series. Because I know as a fan, and I could probably speak for every single person out there, yeah. they would love to see it, and I can almost guarantee it would be another success. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You people there at Disney, I have an idea. There are millions, and I'm not over exaggerating. Millions of viewers and fans 
because I've met a lot of them at the Comic Cons and they all say the same thing. Thank you for making my childhood. They are now bringing their children to the Comic Cons who, of course, now their favorite characters are all the X-Men, mainly me, <laughs> Wolverine. But you have to know, they all, you, if you, you can't ignore the media that is going on, we all want the sixth season that everyone is talking about, including Larry Houston. Let's go, yeah. yes. Including Larry Houston, who's like kind of wondering what is going on, what is the delay? So on behalf of the fellow cast members, Beast, Gambit, Rogue, myself, I got an idea. Let's do season six and Let's just go. wrap everything up. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> and I think it'll be particularly important because um, as a fan, right, like I said earlier, I could relate to the X-Men because they had a, a lot of real life situations in it. And look at the world that we're living in now, right? With the politics, oh. with COVID, with all this stuff. I mean, I think <coughs> right now is the perfect opportunity to release another mm. X-Men series because they did this when, you know, it'll, it was almost not allowed. And now it's, we need this as fans, as oh, yeah. younger kids, a generation, we need that outlet to see this. So I think if Disney were to do this, it, um, oh, yeah. I think it'll help a lot of people, especially with mental health and oh, yeah. know, with, you know, just everything in general. I, I really hope that Disney watches this uh, little clip and, you know, says, hey, we yeah. got to do it. The time is now. It is so current. It is. It, it has never gone out of style, the series. It is so bang on. For as, as you said, and for uh, for mistreating people, yeah. no matter what they are, mistreating people is the main thing. And like that's you know that's we were mutants, we were mistreated. Then no one liked right. us. We were different. Oh, you can't be different. Don't you dare be different. Oh, I got an idea. I'm different. You're the one that's really different. Right. So uh, the world is full of this, and as you said, so. And it's, it, isn't, it hasn't aged. 25, 27 years ago, we nope. started this. Yeah. 20, yeah, 29, no, 92. Do the math, Liana, I can't do it. <laughs> 2002, 2012, <laughs> 29 years. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 29 years now, ago. Now, speaking of that, um, just so, so Disney and Marvel could get a reference, I mean, Eric and Julia did this amazing book here, right? I have, uh, I'm, 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 I've got, they made more money in one month than they thought this was going to make, period, or just off of this book. So this can, this is a testament to how many fans are out there and still support the X-Men animated series uh, brand. You know, this yeah, well, book sold out a lot of places. Very popular. I know. Yeah, I know what I should have showed them. Disney, I said, you know, maybe this will help too. So this is, um, and Jubilee set this up, you know, uh, Allison Court. Right. Well, that was another great, great story. When she was, uh, Ileana, I, I don't know how old you are, but you look about the same age as she might have been when I moved into this house. And uh, she lived across the street from me. I didn't know who she was. Yeah. Allison Court. Really? And, uh, you know, uh, 10 years, 80, 81. Yeah. 11 years later, I'm in the studio after I bought this house. And she was, and she would out, sit outside with her little girlfriend. And because I had the TV show, Circus, I was like a huge star in Canada and, you know, Ireland, wherever it was shown. They would sit there and wait for me to come outside of the house. I'd, I'd just go, hi, Mr. Dodd, hi. You know, they had a crush on me. It was, it was so cool. So she set up, she sets it, and I go into the studio in 92, who's across from me? And I don't know, because she's grown up, you know? So, yeah. I said, what are you doing? I said, what are you doing here? And she said, I'm Jubilee, Mr. Dodd. <laughs> I said, oh, wow. I'm Wolverine. Isn't that a great story? It was unbelievable. Yeah, amazing. So she set this oh, wow. thing up with, with our prime minister to, to, to give the to give to present Eric and Julia's this book. Oh, previously on X-Men, right. Yeah. This is Wolverine meeting our prime minister. So Disney, think about this. <laughs> He's a huge fan of X-Men. Yeah. That's our prime minister. That's, That's awesome. Justin Trudeau. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm squeezing the heck out of his hand, which is why he's <laughs> laughing. Because he's got the, he had the book, uh, 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 Julie, uh, Jubilee had just given it to him, Allison, and he turned to me, he said, and he said, as he's turning to me, he said, uh, now I'll deal with Wolverine. 
And I said to him, he, he turned to me and I grabbed his hand and I said to him, this seriously, I said, anytime, pretty boy. <laughs> <laughs> I would have which, oh, which is why he's laughing his ass. He's not laughing at that off. Anytime, pretty boy. I would have died laughing. Oh, no, I can't. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. What a small world. What a great story, man. What a great yeah. story. Yeah. Well, that's our prime minister, and he was a huge yeah. fan. Of course, yeah. he's a young guy. Yeah. I really hope that uh, that they do something with you guys, for sure. Uh, whether it's a movie or a series, anything, uh, I think it's time to bring you guys back on board, man. Especially now, like I said. So, uh, great yeah. stories there. So do I. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you, Miguel, for sure. Eliana, why don't you ask your last question? Because it's Autism Awareness Month, what words of encouragement do you have for kids with autism who want to be a singer or a voiceover actor like yourself? Um, I have a kid that writes me too. Bobby Love is his name. He's autistic. Asperger's. And he... Um, He's now uh, studying he's with the, um, he's gonna do voice work. Wow. He knows everything Good about voice artists. He knows everything about voice artists who did what voice. I mean, he just found me. He found, uh, what's her name who's here in Canada too, the voice of uh, uh, Sailor Moon. Okay. Sailor Moon, uh, Linda Ballantyne. He, he finds us all. I think he just, you know, he did, he's on Twitter or whatever uh, and says, hi, my name is Bobby Love and I want to do voices. And so, I, same thing I said to him, he just, growing up, that's all I did was to impersonate people and make up and again, just make stupid noises with your voice and try different things. Right. I, from an, an early age, I was doing Jerry Lewis, Gomer Pyle, <laughs> uh, John Wayne, which just sounds stupid for a 10, 11, 12 year old to <laughs> be doing John Wayne, but you know, um, and always just, and trying to do Daffy Duck or Donald Duck and, you know, just, just using my voice to do strange things. I was using it all the time to sing. So it was natural that I would do something. And I always loved doing voices. So I would say to practice, practice people, that, uh, cartoon characters that you like or something, try doing their voice and experimenting with it and <coughs> seeing how you like that or how you can change it. And because it's it's out there, it, it's a it's a wonderful talent, it's a wonderful thing to do and, and, and to follow and to just, it's it's a great pastime. Yeah. Just to, just to listen to voices and try and do them, like just try and impersonate that. Like I said, we're all, we would all run around grade school, you know, recess and stuff doing whatever cartoon we were watching like whether it was Bugs Bunny or whatever you know or Elmer Fudd everyone had to do Elmer Fudd <laughs> what a crazy wabbit you are uh, <laughs> uh, but just trying stuff like that and see if your voice can do it I hated it that I couldn't do D uh, Donald Duck one guy could really do a great Donald Duck I don't know which part of his voice he was using but I always did that we good uh, Elmer Fudd uh, who woke that glass? One of you fellows will pay for this. A uh, hunting we will go. A uh, hunting we will go. I hold it there we go. Yeah. So, so just practice and just make yourself laugh or make others laugh around you. And you, you know, just happen. It'll just, it's fun. Thank you, man. Thank you for those words. Thank you for inspiring all your viewers. Thank you for inspiring kids with autism special needs and being on Toy Quest 101. Now in the link of the bio of this video, you're gonna find all the social media with Cal Dodd. I know he's big on Twitter, he's big on Facebook. He does have an Instagram, doesn't use it as much, but Twitter and Facebook are his no, main no. things, right? Um, and we'll have his website there. And Eliana, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us? You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. That's right, and don't forget to subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube channel, Toy Quest 101. Hit that notification bell so that way you don't miss any toy reviews, statue unboxings, or any celebrity guests like this amazing man right in front of us, Cal Dodd. And, and, and we're on GalaxyCon this Saturday at 7 p.m. Oh, perfect. I'll find the link to that and put it in the bio as well. That's all. Okay. Awesome. All right. All right. And thank you so, so much, uh, you two. I love you. The little, that little dude, what a doll. Thank you so much, man. Oh, and I Thank love you, you so too, much. Miguel.
Bro, I appreciate it. That means a lot, man. That means a lot. Only one man can say that to me. That's you, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, man. Thanks, man. All okay. right. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you guys Bye. in the next episode of Toy Quest 101. Bye, guys. Thanks, Miguel. Bye, Liana.